Today is going to be a demonstration of the power and the Spirit of God. We need to prepare the way. Some of you, if not all of you, I hope have come hungry for what God wants to do. People uh, from our church last night went over to uh, what was used to be called the NEC, whatever that was called last night, I, I don't know. Billy Graham's son was preaching. Taya, what's the name? Taya and... Uh, Michael W. Smith was there. Caleb told me over a thousand people responded to Christ last night. Come on. That's wonderful. That tells us, that tells us that there is a great spiritual hunger in our land right now. Right now. Right now, friends. I'm going to demonstrate something to you. I, I didn't plan particularly to do this, but I want you to see something. I'm going to step off the platform and I'm going to show you what happens to us in life. We tend to live life on a very flat, one-dimensional plane. We live in a natural world. The Bible says that we are in the world, but we are not of this world. So we tend to literalize literally take this verse to mean, yeah, I'm in the world. I am in this world. Yeah, we know. We live in a place called the West Midlands of the United Kingdom. Thank God for every one of you from wherever you've come from. The Word of God is going to be powerfully demonstrated to you in this service this morning. But I want you to see something. The whole purpose of coming to church is not to stay on the natural plane. The whole purpose of Champions Church and any church worldwide that preaches the Word of God, it is to lift your life to a different level. And I want to encourage you this morning, if you're part of this church, think about this, I Disciple has launched. There's a great number of people who've already signed up for I Disciple, digital discipleship. Digital discipleship in a digital world means we are now preparing and filming every single week for discipleship. You have to get the code. You have to be part of it. You can now watch discipleship on your device, on your TV. You can take it to the coffee shop in Starbucks this week at the drive through at Merry Hill. People were watching I Disciple at Starbucks at 8 o'clock on, so on Saturday morning just gone. It's a new addition every single week in our church. Why are we doing these things? Why are we bothering? Why are we saying, hey, you need to be a follower of Jesus? Because Jesus did not cause you, call you to live at this level. He wants to step up this church. Come on. He wants you in this service not to just stay where you are. We are not here, friends. Big announcement, newsflash. This service is not here to make you just happy and clappy. Neither is it here to make you crappy. He wants to take your crappy life and He wants to give you a happy life. But listen, excuse my French, just need to be real this morning. Some of us have been at this level for so long. Now we need to step into a supernatural fourth dimension of the Spirit of God. Come with me. Are you willing to step up in life today? Are you willing? Are you willing? Are you willing to step in today to all that God wants to do? Are you willing? We declare, Father God, over our young people, champion, youth, United Kingdom. This is the future, my friend. When the world says, what are the young people coming to? In this generation, I'll tell you what they're coming to. They are coming to Jesus. They are coming to Jesus by their droves. Thank you, Father. We declare and prophesy a new generation of worship leaders. We declare over right now, this generation. I want to call right now. Listen to me carefully. This is a holy moment. Listen to me carefully. If you believe the call of God is upon your life, if you don't want to be ordinary in your life, 
I'm calling everybody under the age of 30. Don't come if you don't mean it because the Spirit of God is listening and He's watching and waiting. Start to come right now under the age of 30, 30, 29. Come on, if you believe the call of God is upon your life, like this young lady, I want you to come. Under 30, it's come and kneel. Come on, right now. The power of God is in this place. Come now. Come now. Come now. Come now. Hurry, 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 hurry. Come now. Come now. Come now. Come now. Come now. Come now. Woo! Wow, what is happening? What is happening? What is happening? Have you ever? Have you ever? Callum Baker, that's you. Come here. You've probably never been on a platform in your life. Let's give it up for Callum. Hold that microphone. Is that turned on? Is that turned on? Don't worry, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna harm you. Great to see you, my friend. Stand there. That was awesome. The gift of God upon you. I didn't say you over there. Go over there. You're already dating. Stay over there. You know the gift of God is upon you. Where's your mom? Is she here? Where? Why weren't you sitting by her? <laughs> Don't stop praying. Don't stop praying. You know that. I have never seen anything like this. Come here, uh, Callum. One of the smartest dressed men in our church. <laughs> I'm going to talk to you about your mom. She could be watching right now, so you better behave yourself. She will be. She will be. She's going to be surprised That's to see right, you yeah. standing preaching this morning. <laughs> oh, you didn't realize that you were going to be preaching this morning. Okay. I'm here only for you to verify, nod your head, wink, say yes in the microphone if what I'm telling is the truth. I want you, this is Diane and Ian Baker's son. My wife went to her very first job in the civil service way before we were married, age 17, Starbridge Ring Road, in the civil service and on the first day she bumped into a beautiful girl called Diane Baker, your mom. Yes. <laughs> Correct. I got that one right. She was 17 or around about the same time. And Pastor Gillian and Diane have been friends ever since. Now, 60. Both of them since 17. That's a long time. Many of you know the name Diane Baker because in our church we have been praying, as you know, for your mom because of cancer, stem cell treatment, things look very, very rocky at a time. And last, last uh, the week before last, a week on Tuesday, just gone, Jillian goes out with our grandson River in the car for a nice day out with your mom, Diane. And on the way back, your mom is halfway through a sentence, correct? Correct. Correct. And all of a sudden, her brain freezes and she can't speak. Jillian kind of tries to cover it over and think what's going. She was halfway through a sentence, correct? And all of a sudden, and then she starts to cry. And, and then it comes back and she said, I knew what I wanted to say, but I couldn't. Your mom gets home. Miraculously, your dad arrives home early, early from work. And Diane has a stroke, correct? Yeah. Correct. Answer this question. Did your mom's speech go? Yeah, completely. Completely went through the stroke. Yeah. And then a complication, she couldn't swallow. Yeah. No. 
couldn't swallow. Rushed blue light to Russell's Hall Hospital. Indeed. And there she is, a week today. Your mom's lying in hospital, unable to speak, but a few words. She's got a notepad and pen, friends, to communicate with. She's not only gone through cancer, and now she's got a stroke. What is going on? So we arrived. What time did we get to the hospital? Five o'clock last Sunday night. We go and chat. And then we lay our hands upon you, mom. Correct. Correct. When did your mom walk out of hospital completely with her speech back and able to swallow and all the tubes out? A couple of days ago. It, it was actually Tuesday morning. Okay, okay. We didn't quite get that. Sunday evening, five o'clock, tubes up her nose, feeding her. She couldn't swallow food. She couldn't speak but a few words. Every question we asked her, she had to get a notepad and pen out. You know that. That's the truth. Ask Callum afterwards if you want to. Is this the truth? And on Tuesday morning, friends, she not only walks out of hospital with no tubes, she can speak. She can swallow. Completely healed by the power of God. Come on. That is true. Come on. Is that correct? That is correct. Thanks so much. Appreciate you just verifying that. You can go back to where you don't, don't go back to your seat because God ain't f- finished with you yet. All that for me, you got two now. You can do a duet. I'm going to lead many of you to Jesus right now. Say right now. Because what happened in the hospital ward last Sunday night at five o'clock, When I finished praying in Mark's usual whisper fashion in hospital, which was about like this, in the name of Jesus. That was the whisper. There were no curtains. And so this ward has other three other stroke victims in, all of them in a terrible condition. The lady opposite, her face is contorted. The lady opposite has had a terrible life. She's she's only in her 60s. But she's crying out and thrashing. She's had a major stroke. So at the end of the prayer, the daughter and the family around the bed, when I opened my eyes, they were all looking like this. Wow. And the daughter goes, that was amazing. I said, would you like some? (laughs) Correct. I said, would you like some prayer? So I walk over to the mother in bed who is contorted. I hold her by the hand, she reaches out, and my nose, which is rather big, I only bent down on the wedding and I cut the cake. <laughs> my, my, I'm eyeballing this woman this close, right in her face. And I pray a prayer of healing in the name of Jesus. And all the family around the bed looking on and listening to what's going on. And I said, and when Jesus fills you, he's gonna give you such peace. This lady's face went from contorted to a huge grin that I'd never, I'd not seen all the time that we were there. I said, you know what? You really need to, would you like to invite him into your heart? She said, yeah. And there and then in the hospital ward, I led this lady to Jesus Christ. There and then, there and then. Who said amen? Amen. Amen to you as well. Amen. We normally do this at the end. It's 11.32. This is, the, this is 11.32. You got saved at 11.32 stroke 11.33 on this Sunday morning. I'm just telling you, you are getting saved right now. Give your heart to Jesus. Give your heart to Jesus. Just close your eyes, bow your head for a moment. This is the prayer that I prayed in Russell's Hall Hospital with a lady whose life is such a mess physically in every way, shape and form. Pray in your heart these words, the same as the lady who received Jesus just last Sunday night. Dear Jesus, I invite you into my heart. 
I'm sorry for my sins. I turn from my sin. I turn to Jesus, my Saviour. Come into my life. Forgive me. Cleanse me. Make me brand new. I am a new creation. No more in condemnation. I give you all of my life. And I ask you to fill me with the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' Name, right here, right now. In Jesus' Name. Come on, let's give it up for Jesus, shall we? If that is you, if that is you right now, a miracle, listen to me, a miracle has taken place in your heart right now. You'll never be the same again. You're going to get the biggest smile on your face. The devil has contorted your face. But I'm telling you now, people are being set free by the power of the living Jesus. Peace is coming into your heart. Let me address every father. There are three men here right now. The Spirit of God is telling me. Three men here right now. And you weren't adopted. You were not adopted and you weren't fostered. But you suffer from what I would call a an orphan spirit. Where because of your father, you never felt as if you really, really belonged. Who am I talking to right now? Who am I talking to right now? Three men. You never felt as if you belonged and you are an adult right now and you have your own family, but you still sit in your chair at night and feel, I don't belong. You don't feel as if you have, because you've got what I call an orphan spirit. And an orphan spirit makes you feel just like that, an orphan. And the devil keeps chirping off and chiming off in your head and telling you, oh, you know, nobody loves you. Nobody cares about you. You know, you, you'll never be loved. You'll may, never make a great father. I want to tell you, I want to smash the devil in the face this morning and you just tell him, shut up, you're a liar. You're a liar. Who am I talking to today? If that's you, raise your hand. Nobody else is looking. If that's you, raise your hand if you feel you're suffering. Yes. Who else? Who else? Yes. Right there. There's going to be one more somewhere. The Holy Spirit never lies. There's got to be somebody else somewhere. Yes. God bless you. I'm being told somebody somewhere there. Whoever you are, Jesus knows and Jesus sees. I want you to hold your hands up. It, it, not everybody, just those three, four men, whoever you are, young men. There's one of you that is almost felt, I'll never be free of this because of my age. I'll, ne I'll never be free. This is my lot in life. If I could walk up, where did the stairs go? What have you put them over there for, Michael? Are you going to demonstrate? No, I, I'm fine. I'll never be free. But today is the day you step up. Say step up. Step up in the name of Jesus. Lift your hands, man, whoever you are. I right now by faith point of contact with you. I re reach out my hands towards you in the name of Jesus. Are you ready, church, for an explosion of God's power? When we prayed this prayer, all of these under 30s, we're going to minister to these in a second. But right now in the name of Jesus, when I prayed this prayer, Jack, are you ready? We're going to explode with praise. Come on, Jesus is blasting out the devil. Come on out of your life. In the name of Jesus, I declare, I break the curse of this orphan spirit over you. And we declare you today are free in the name of Jesus. Come on, everybody. Come on, everybody. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, Father God, stretch your hands towards these amazing under 30s. I declare this is the next youth and young adults move of God here. Take a look around, guys. By the way, this is Paddy Paddington. He's just been traveling with Pastor Caleb. They loved him in America. God has launched something Physically, you saw people respond to your rapping. The church went nuts. I think they had revival wherever they went. There's just been a new movie called Paddington in Peru. This is, this is, 
That may be your next destination. We're going to hold on to you as long as we can. No, we release you in Jesus' name. This is, look, at, look around folks. This is the next move of God. We get to see it. We get to belong to it. And if you go, oh, I'm, I'm so old and decrepit. Hey, make a decision like I've made. I'm going to be the world's greatest cheerleader for the next generation. That's who I'm going to be. Stretch out your hands towards them in the name of Jesus and all of you at the front. You better believe this. You better mean it because Jesus is going to just going to take you up on this. This is the offer of life for ministry. In the name of Jesus, I declare over this amazing group of people that there are pastors and leaders and missionaries and prophets and apostles and amazing people, incredible givers, the blessing and power of God. When you spoke, this is Ethan, he spoke on there. I felt a witness with my spirit that this guy has a communication gift. Did anybody else feel that? You are gonna speak. You, you felt slow of speech. You've always felt about yourself that really you've got nothing to say. But I'm gonna tell you, you've got so much to say and you will have so much to say. And you better stay best buddies with this guy because you two are the sons of thunder in our church. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we pray an amazing blessing over these. In the name of Jesus, power of God, power of God, power of God, power of God. There's somebody in this area, in this circle here. I have no idea, but this is what I hear the Spirit of God saying. There's somebody in this area here that either you are married or you are about to get married. And either right now you know that you can't get pregnant. I don't know how you know that, but that something happened to your fallopian tubes and you've been told you will never, never, never. I'm telling you now by the Spirit of God, ignore that, you will. 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 What country are you from? Nigeria. God has a special link between our church. I'll tell you how I know it. Because myself and Pastor Tim, it's in my book that I wrote. But I left out names and places, but I want you to know that something happened to us And if I'm really honest, myself and Pastor Tim, we went somewhere and we didn't think we would ever get away. We didn't think we'd ever go home. We thought we would lose our lives. And when we did get back home, this is what I said. Devil, devil, you listen to me. I'm gonna have a church full of Nigerians. Is that the best we can do? Because I tell you what you say, what was that about? I ain't telling you what it was about. All I'm going to tell you is something bad happened and I tell the devil, hey, you tried to take me out. I'm going to take you out and I'm going to rub this in your face and I'm going to see God move in Nigeria in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. From Netherton to Nigeria. And everybody in between power of God upon your young life in the name of Jesus. Thank you for doctors and nurses, rappers, ministers of the gospel, youth ministers in the name of Jesus. You may be sitting on the floor right now, sir, but I'm going to tell you something on the inside. Your spirit is leaping because God is showing you something about your future in the name of Jesus. Pastor Caleb, in the name of Jesus, we anoint you for this season. This amazing, oh, you're all up there as well. Wow, there's more and more and more and more. Stretch out your hands towards them. Feel waves of God's presence, waves of God's glory. They're all up here as well. In the name of Jesus, what a mighty move of God. In the mighty name of Jesus, 
in the mighty name of Jesus. Now we're going to do something really unusual. Are you ready? Because what we're going to do is I'm not going to release you back to your seats. Give me 10 minutes. Can you stand for 10 minutes? Where's the guy that was sitting down? Can you stand for 10 minutes? God's doing an awesome work in your life. Oh, my word. I don't really want to say this. Somebody. Uh, let, me give you a, let me give you a story, an old story. A lady walked up to me one day and she said, I don't know why, but I know you're a, I know you're a Christian. I don't know why. I don't know why you can help me. She said, my beautiful blonde daughter, something's happened to her. She said at night she comes home and she goes into her bedroom. And when she goes into her bedroom, she starts to make weird, horrible, piercing sounds. So I've asked her about it and she said, something is controlling her. Now listen, because there's a person here who is about to get set free, says the Spirit of God. And it happens every night. She said, I don't know why I think, I don't know why I'm telling you. So I paused and gave a quick Holy Spirit, okay, you better give me something, Lord, here, don't let me down. And I said to her, your daughter has played on a Ouija board. I I couldn't have made that up. I didn't know that. I've never met the girl, the woman. And and this is the reaction. Oh, no, 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 no. My daughter would never do that. I'm telling you, I said, you go home and you sit your daughter down tonight and you'll find out, you know what? The Holy Spirit can never, never will lie. The Bible says that he's able to dig right into the recesses of your soul, dividing. If you trust the voice of the Holy Spirit, you can get right past people's smiling faces and you can get boom, right to the root of it. She said, well, it won't be true. I said, well, you go and ask her. Next morning, she comes in to work where I was and... Uh, She said, can I see you? I said, yeah. She said, you were right. She said, last week, the week before, she was at the pub with her mates and somebody came in with a Ouija board and they decided to play on it for fun. Be warned, young people. Hello, be warned. You know what Ouija means? It means it's an old word for good luck. Good luck if you play. It is a demonic calling on the spirits of the dead. And by the way, dead people can't speak. It is a demonic spirit that speaks on their behalf. It's called a familiar spirit. The spirit's been hanging around with Aunt Dora, whoever she may be. And when Aunt Dora died, they took on the form and they were able to tell you things about, oh, it's got to be true, it's got to be right. Hey, don't play around with fire unless you've got the spirit of God to meet it head on. And then you shouldn't be playing around with it anyway. Won't even take time to tell you the end of that story. I ended up going to that lady's house, talking to the daughter about what had happened. I'm telling you now, friends, you mess around with the occult, clairvoyancy, stuff like that, horror stuff, horror scopes. The key word is in the word horror scopes. Oh, I need to read my horror scope to find out what horrors. Hey, I'm going to read my good news scope. It's called the Bible. It's called the Bible. I'm ready to take my jacket off this morning. It's Father's Day. Who am I talking to? And you are plagued. The 
name of Jesus. Who needs to be set free this morning from clairvoyancy? Horoscopes, just come and step out. There's no room at the front. They've taken over this church this morning, thank God. But you can step in the aisle and somebody just, you just, if, if somebody steps out, just point. Nobody else needs to look around. Your daughter, your daughter, great. She's not in the service. We'll pray for your daughter, but there's somebody here in this service right now who needs to step out and be broken free because there is stuff that's happening in your life you never associated it. Yes. What did you do? Okay. I sense there may be one person, other, other person. I'm going to pray for you, pray for your daughter. Remember this, if you involve yourself in spiritual, in the spirit world, in the occult world, remember this, you're asking for trouble. It is demonically driven, satanically driven, and you are going to open yourself. There's going to be a massive door open in your heart. Who else am I talking to? In the name of Jesus, there's somebody in this service right now. You have a child that has bad nightmares every single night, and they scream out. I need to pray for you as well. If that's you, just right now, reach out. We need a point of contact. It's called point of contact by faith in the name of Jesus. You say, what do you mean? Jesus said, lay hands on the sick and they will recover. In the name of Jesus, the power of God flow through mom. In the name of Jesus, we pray a protection, the blood of Jesus upon her. In the mighty name of Jesus. I can't reach that. Uh, where? There, there, there you are. Come, come, let her come through. Make way for the ladies here. In the name of Jesus, Father God, cleanse your mind. I break you free from the curse of satanic opposition coming into your life. She belongs to Jesus. She didn't, she didn't mean to do it. She didn't know what she was doing. And so I say, Satan, get out of this life. Power of God. And by the way, the stuff that you have been suffering from inside of your body that is private and personal only to you from this moment, Jesus breaks that off you as well. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Are you ready for the Bible reading to start this message? <laughs> okay. What have we got? About six minutes. You ready for the Word of God? Mark chapter 5. You can read. Are you okay there? Still there? Are you still okay there? All right. That was awesome. For such a time as this. such a time as this watch this space while Jesus was uh, what is this Mark chapter 5 while Jesus was still speaking some people came from the house of Jairus the synagogue leader your daughter is dead now the context of this is the synagogue leader came to Jesus and said my daughter is dying she wasn't dead. But Jesus goes to the lady with the issue of blood and heals her. And while he's talking and healing somebody else, they come rushing from his house and say, Hey, it's too late. Some of you here this morning need to hear it is never. You fill in the missing words. It is never too late. So they said, your daughter is dead. Don't bother Jesus anymore. There's no point. Now watch this. Overhearing what they said. Jesus overhears every conversation, by the way. Jesus told him, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. The devil tried to take you out. But God is setting you alight. And you are going to smash the devil in the face for every year that he's ripped off from you. In the mighty names of Jesus. And by the way, there is an anointing upon your life for the future. And it starts, the future starts the moment I finish this sentence. And you will lay hands on the sick according to the word of God and they will recover. Because there is a residue. Is that your mom? Do you remember that you 
Well, of course you remember. You were a worship leader in the great, one of the greatest churches in this area. How many years ago? 30 years ago. And your pastor became a very good friend of mine. In fact, he saved mine and Pastor Gillian's life. And right now he's going through a hard time himself. But he was the one man 30 years ago, I remember, who actually believed the Bible and prayed for the sick. Do you remember? He was a mighty miracle working pastor 30 years ago. And right now he thinks his life has ended. But I'm going to tell you something. I never saw this when I saw you, but it just, it's like as if heaven opened when I walked over to you and the residue from your mother that led worship in this guy, in this guy's church where miracles took place regularly as is passed through from, from her, from all of that ministry of you standing on that platform in the name of Jesus. In the name, come here, come here right now. It's coming to you in the name of Jesus. Hold out your hands in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray, Father God. Just a mighty, mighty in anointing in the name of Jesus. And Jesus wants to set you free as well. In the mighty name of Jesus, from all the hurt and the shame. In the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Stretch out your hands in the name of Jesus. The Bible says to you, the sun sets free. Now you're going to stay there for the rest of the time. I hope you're comfy. In the name of Jesus. Get ready, get ready, get ready. And you are going to be part of it as well. In the name of Jesus. What we were saying? Oh, the Bible reading. So, is that the next verse? He did not let anybody follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. Now watch what happens. When they came to the home of the synagogue leader, Jesus saw a commotion with people crying and wailing loudly. He went in and said to them, why all this commotion and wailing? The child is not dead, but asleep. They laughed at him and he put them all out. Out, go, 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 go. He took the child's father and mother and the disciples who were with him and he went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said, Talitha kum, which is Greek. Now I know a little Greek, works at the chip shop down the road. And I, know, I also know a little Hebrew. He works at the tea shop. <laughs> we know it's Greek because it, it gives us the translation. Little girl, I say to you, get up. The title of my morning's message this morning as we close <laughs> is, ta-da! I say to you, get up! I say to you, get up! I say to you, I say to all of you, get up, get up, get up, get up, get up and praise the Lord. By the way, we're going to finish on this amazing song. What did I say that song was? Bless God in the sanctuary. You've just been invited to join the last one. You've just been invited. So stick around. I say to you, get up. With this I finish, friends. If you're going to belong to this church, you are not going to be. I was going to use the steps again, but I can't. If you belong to this church, it is not good enough to just attend. We are not a pew-filling, seat-filling church. We are followers, disciples of Jesus. I'm going to continue. This is... This is now a series. <laughs> I announce. I say to you, get up. Are you ready? Because you better get up and get ready. Like fire, God is moving through this building. Hang on, hang on. In the name of Jesus. Who has got an eye socket problem? Pastor, 
Okay, well, we'll pray for him. I'm actually, yeah, that's fantastic. I'm not taking away from your brother. But somebody, some, who, is, who are we talking to? There's a lady there. Shout out your name. Dorcas, you are in the Bible. What nationality are you, Dorcas? Sorry? You need to tell me. Rwanda. Isn't that amazing? Myself and my son went to Rwanda on a mission strip. Rwanda is calling. Did this occur with something going into your eye? Yes. How old were you when it happened? A few years ago. So you have an eye socket problem. Okay. I'm going to pray for you at the end. So what? A, oh, sorry. I thought you were saying somebody else as well. Jesus sees you, Dorcas. And here's the word of the Lord to you, Dorcas. Are you ready for Rwanda? Are you ready? Yeah. Dorcas was in the Bible. You're not. He says to you, the reason you're alive is so that you can be the Dorcas not in the Bible. You can be the Dorcas in the 21st century. And the reason he's called you out and singled you out today is not only because he has amazing ability to know everything about you, even though I've never ever met you before in my life. In the name of Jesus, Dorcas, you are going to be the same woman that was in the Bible. Read about her. You already must know her. Your parents must have read the Bible and said, your name is Dorcas, not if that's correct. Yes, in the name of Jesus, I declare right now over your life, when, as soon as this service finishes, Dorcas, I'm going to meet you at the front and anybody else that needs further healing and we're going to see your eye socket restored powerfully. In fact, right now, reach out your hands towards Dorcas in the name of Jesus. Right now, healing take place in this service. On the count of three, are you ready? One, two, three. Be healed, Dorcas. I open in the name of Jesus. And for this lady's brother here, also relation, did you say brother? In the name of Jesus, wherever he is right now, Father, touch his life. In the name of Jesus. I say to you, get up. Let me, re let me conclude with these words before we lift the roof in worship. Are you ready? Jesus never met anybody and said, lie down. Jesus never met anybody and said, now listen, make yourself comfortable. Jesus never said, make yourself comfortable. Jesus never said, hey, relax, don't worry. Hopefully you'll get better in a couple of months. Jesus never said those words. I've read the New Testament time and time again. Jesus, whenever he met anybody, including funerals. Hello, including funerals. He said, I say to you, get up. Get up in the name of Jesus. Many years ago, a woman and a man walked into my office. I'm going to keep this to 15 seconds. Everybody knew him in this area. They'd started to come to the church because I'd met him in the school playground. And he and his wife were physically, uh, physically sick. And everybody knew this guy because he walked on two sticks. And everybody saw him. He was 30 years of age. And he walked like this on two sticks. So everybody verified this guy is crippled. His back is gone. He had stuff inserted into his spine. Everybody knew. Cut a long story short. They come to my office the one day and his wife was sick. She came from the hospital. She had fluid around her heart. She was gasping. She said, Pastor, I'm about to die. The hospital sent me and I, and I, and I can't breathe. The power of God hit that woman in my office and instantaneously, the water around her heart drained off. However, I don't know that happened. And she was as free as a bird. And her husband, the cripple said, well, what about me? And I'm thinking, what about you? 
I said, listen, there's no room in my little office here. So why don't we walk into the church and let's see what Jesus wants to do. He stood right there at the altar. There was nobody in the church. I laid my hands on his head. He went crash to the floor. And as he did so, his back snapped. Like that. Everybody, his wife, me. And I thought, oh no, he's crippled for life. But you know, when God wants to do an operation in this last worship song, you better get ready. Everybody needs to what? Step up. I say to you, get up. I say to you, get up. So I took him by the hand, a cripple with two sticks. I took him by the hand and he got up and he got down. He started to move. The first thing he did was, he did press ups at the front of the church. He went, I'm free. Then he ran up the stairs and ran back and he started to twist and turn. Everybody saw his healing because Jesus said, I say to you, what do we say? Get up in the name of Jesus. Get up in the name of Jesus. Come on. Come on. Every chance I get, I bless your name.